Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Wilhelm in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending their simulation and their system is called the Veronian system. So without further ado everyone let's get into this. So it's already in the workshop ready for us to hop straight in. So where are we? There it is. It's got an interesting thumbnail of a star in the distant sky. So here we go. The Veronian system. Veronian system. This system was first discovered in the year 4323. Situated 5.3 light years from our solar system, humanity is on its way to conquer another system yet again. Their spaceship is now 2.34 light years away from the system using the reworked James Webb telescope. Very cool. Here is a list of objects in the system. So, star itself. It is an F2V class star with a radius of 1.57 solar radii and a mass of 1.21 solar masses. And a luminosity of 3.78 times that of the sun. This star is roughly 1.81 billion years old. So it's a lot younger than our sun then. Uh, moving on, first of the planets, we've got Fermor. First planet of the system. It is a rocky planet with a grey surface and has a highly elliptical orbit due to the gravity of Hades, Hydra, Deserta and Terenia. It's approximately the same size as Mars. Very nice. There you go. Moving on, we've got Deserta. So the planets that are mentioned in that last description. Looking good. Second planet of the system is a desert planet that is totally safe with a poisonous atmosphere containing sulfur dioxide and methane and a surface so extreme that one spot could reach a temperature of 182 degrees Celsius. So not exactly where you want to go. Yes, there it is. It's a mix of all kinds of uh, hell there. Right, next up we've got uh, this one here. Obviously, first appearance, looking way more Earth-like straight away. It looks quite good actually. It's got the North and South Pole region. I like the surface colour detail. I've noticed that straight away. It's kind of like how I do mine with a mix of the uh, desert colour. I like it when they're like that. I don't like it if they're all green a lot of the time. I like a blend of the sandy, yellowies mixed with the green. It just it just brings a better look to it, especially when you have the oceans. So very nicely designed. Uh, third planet of the system. It's the only habitable world in the entire system where humanity is planning to reside. It's a super Earth with a radius of 1.71 Earth radius and a mass of 2.86 Earth masses. Its atmosphere has the same mass as Earth, but the atmosphere pressure is relatively low at only uh, 3.8. 33.3 kPa, so we would need to barge the engineer the DNA of the settlers. Life does exist there, and it's very similar to Earth, even though the vegetation contains a substance similar to a, uh, a crollo fill that makes it green. Uh, the planet also has some unique marine life, has a single moon. Very nice. It's a very nicely designed world. I like the uh, glowing uh, city lights on it as well, the nice light blue. Very exotic. Looking good. I like it. Very nicely designed. Um, and then we've got this one here. Tarelli. Looking good. The only moon, and it's quite small. It's less than half the size of the moon and orbits very close to the planet, completing one full orbit in only 1.74 Earth days. It's also tad locked. There you go. Nice. Next up, we've got Hydra. Which is over here. The fourth planet of the system it is an ice planet with water beneath its surface. Strangely, despite being small in both Venus and Neptune, it also has uh, more mass than both of them. It has one moon. Okie dokie. There it is. The only moon of Hydra is the same size as Mercury. Looking good. So next up we've got Kera's Belt. It's similar to our asteroid belt, containing many asteroids and space debris. It was named Kera's Belt because a dwarf planet named Kera resides there. There it is. Same size as Ceres. There it is. Next up, we've got Hades. I like the names in this system as well. Got some good names in here. Ooh, very red. Ooh, ooh. The largest and most massive gas giant in the system. Even though it is smaller than Jupiter, it is denser, with a mass of 1.12 Jupiter masses. Its red colour glows through the vastness of space, earning it the nickname of Ruby of Space. Nice. And it's got some moons. Io like moon to precise many volcanic activity on its surface. In orbit of the deep red gas giant. Now I saw someone on the last one I was saying to get some more surface views, so here we go. Don't usually do them, I only do them if it's a really really cool looking sort of view I think, but yeah, we'll, go, we'll go for it for this one, get the view of the red red gas giant in the sky. So there you go, so anyone who like, I know there's been a, lot, a big, big load of people want those surface views, so there you go. It's definitely more interesting with objects of atmosphere though, so we'll try and get one if there's any coming up. So there you go, next one we've got this one here, simple rocky moon. Similar to Callisto, okay. Critorus. 
Reddish atmosphere similar to Titan, so it also has cracks on its surface. Like Titan and Europa combined, kind of. Well, so this one has an atmosphere, so we'll try and uh, we'll land on this one. Let's go ahead and plop them there. So below the atmosphere, you get this more sky effect. There's the gas giant in the sky. Very mysterious, this parent star. That's quite a cool view, actually. Yeah, I like it. Look at it just peering through the atmosphere there, that little white glue. Very nice. There it is. Looking good. Uh, next up, we have got Hysia over here. Moon of Hades, similar to Europa. Massive ocean beneath its frozen surface. Very nice. And lastly, we've got Heria over here. Oh, there's another one, actually. Last moon. It's also the smallest, only 295 kilometers. And then G Guro, Gero over here. Last major moon. Oh, that's that one. Oh, no, the one we just was a preview. It was a captured dwarf planet. Okay. Nice. Looking good. Next up, we've got our Aphrodite here. Which is here. The sixth planet in the system and the second gas shine. It has an atmosphere with a mix of light yellow, light blue, purple, and yellow hues. From space and even from, uh, was it Terenia, the planet's beauty can still be seen, which is why it was named Aphrodite after the Greek goddess of love and beauty. There you go. Good choice. It's very vibrant. Looking good. Nice ring system to go over them as well. First of the moons, we've got Diane over here. Very small. It's smaller than Ceres, the largest asteroid in our solar system. Ooh, the big debate is Ceres an asteroid. Ooh, that's a big debate there. Would you class it? Ooh. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Cretera. The second moon of Aphrodite is approximately the same size as Io and has an orange surface. Be graded up as well. We've got Nora over here. It's a small moon, slightly smaller than Sedna. We've got Treno over here. Final moon of Aphrodite. It is another small moon, slightly larger than Make Make. Well, we got the Treva over here. Changes this object to be pulled by the gravity of Aphrodite from the orbit instead of Trenus. Is it a moon that has a moon that has an asteroid of a moon? <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Troy is a moon of Trenus. This object sort of falls into gravity, but either it orbits. The chance it happened in the one in a hundred thousand from comparison. You are more likely to get shot by lightning ten times in a year than this to happen. <laughs> Wowie. Okay. Next up, we're moving to uh, Aphemis over here. An ice giant and the seventh planet has a light blue colour in its atmosphere. Looking good. So we've got another Io-like moon. So a lot of volcanic activity-like moons here. There it is. So then we have this one here. Steiners here over here. Europa like moon, the second moon, it contains liquid water beneath its surface. Then we have a uh, gigan giganta over here. The final moon has a yellow colour and also volcanic activity. So there's a lot of volcanic activity moons. Yeah, there's loads, isn't there? A very geologically active system. Right. Then we have Veron over here. Second dwarf planet, brown colour. There you go, pretty basic. Then we have Talos, which is yeah. Pretty dark. The third dwarf planet in the system, its surface has a light blue-green colour resembling emerald. There you go. Nice. Then we got uh, Me Mephitis over here. Final planet of the system. This planet was originally the solar system's fifth giant, but it is ejected and made its way here, where it now resides. It also collected several dwarf planets we never knew about and made them into moons. Nice, there you go. This is what would have been planet nine. We've got ejected out, planet nine, planet X, however you want to call it. And we've got Cade here. It looks similar to Triton. Many theorize it was once Triton's binary companion until uh, Mephis came in and took it away. And then gravity deflected Triton to Neptune. The theory was later confirmed to be true. Uh, next up, we got Thrawn. Second moon. It's a very cold moon and once dwarf planet. So yeah, all of these are like once dwarf planets now. So the system we've got this one here. Third moon, once a dwarf planet. Yep. We've got the fourth moon, which is here. U4. Rock move an orange surface, unlike the other moons. This one formed alongside, okay, alongside the parent. And then lastly, we've got this one, Artemis. Final moon, it surfaces a mix of white and light blue colours. 
very dark here. Nice. Moving on. So, distan. Distan. What's it? There's a few more. What's this? Burn. No one. Simple dwarf planet has a yellow surface for the dwarf planet of the system. And yeah, running the middle dwarf planet there. And then lastly, yeah, di distan. Which is this guy. Look at this. Also, a simple dwarf planet, yellow surface, dark patches. It's in pitch darkness. There it is. And there you go. And then the final ring. This is the last asteroid belt where most of the comets are. So that's the equivalent of the Kuiper belt. It's a pretty big chunk, isn't it? There you go. Nice. And that's it. Nice. Well, there we go. Massive thank you to the creator of the system, Wilhelm, for uh, sending this in. Nice system, actually. I enjoyed that. There you go. Pretty nice lineup. I really like that Earthlight world though, I really did like the design of that, that looked good, it looked really good. Actually what we'll do is we'll get a cheeky uh, surface view on this guy as well. Have a little look around there, he goes, yeah, what do you think of that? Nice blue uh, blue sky as we uh, finish up today, so, ooh, I kind of want to play this sim actually, let's see it in action. Oh my god, too fast. There you go, three. Which is it, uh, comes around. For everyone out there who likes those surface views, here you go. Any second now, where are we? There you go, e. So there you go, what do you think of that? Nice little sky colours there. But yeah, there we are everybody. So if you enjoyed this episode, let's see if we can hit that like button. Let's go and go for 100 likes on those videos, guys. And also subscribe for more, help us on the journey to uh, 50,000 subscribers as well. And again, a massive thank you to creator of the system, Wilhelm, for sending this system in. Really enjoyed that. And yeah, with that, we'll send done everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.